Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Unleashing Potentials podcast. So joining me today, all the way from Switzerland, is Cornelia. How are you? Hi, Bernadette. Uh, wow, it's so cool having me over. Thank you so I'm much. so How excited you? to have you. I'm good. We were talking of the weather in Switzerland, what it's like there. Yes, actually, it's still amazing. It's a beautiful late uh, summer, actually. So winter is still far away. And uh, how on your side? How is it on your side? Fall. So the trees are changing color. The temperature is slowly dropping. We've had some warm days and some cool and hot days. Very cool. And yeah. do you like winters in general? Do I like winters? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it can be pretty cold over there right so. it's very cold very very cold yeah how about you do you like winter you know if it's like this bright uh, blue sky and we're you know cold uh, and snowy and yet then you see like this reflection of the fresh fallen snow that's what I love yeah but when it's gray and dark then uh, yeah yeah that makes it hard yeah welcome to the podcast yeah, thank you so much. I'm really so much looking forward to, you know, getting to know you and your audience. And uh, yeah, I'm curious, you know, about your questions. <laughs> yeah, me too. My first question is, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. You know, I'm an electric engineer from my background and a personal energy strategist, mm -hmm. which means... so. Uh, for a very long time, um, the only energy energy I knew was, is the one of electric en energy. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered the world of quantum physics and, um, and the quantum field. And, uh, you know, in a nutshell, everything is energy. And so it opened a completely new world to me. And I found so many similarities between our personal energy mm -hmm. and electric energy. And that's what I kind of, it's a way to bring this world of energy and this power of uh, managing your energy closer to the people. Mm, that is so fascinating. Um, are you talking about the energy type as in electricity and voltage or is it spiritual energy? Actually, that's what I tried to explain. It's both. I'm kind of combining it. Because from my background, there are so there are so many similarities. Mm -hmm. Because you know, just you know, last year we had this energy crisis in in Europe, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden people realized, you know, without energy there is just no life, no social life. You know, nothing would work without electricity or electric energy, mm -hmm. and you know, the, and in a way, a par. Um, so, um, synonym for it also you know when you look at the personal energy you know if you are low in energy or then you will you know have a burnout and then nothing works as well right so there is no life without energy in our social life and also, also in our personal life mm -hmm. I absolutely love that you combine both that's fascinating because you you can learn from both and teach from both just different point of view, but bringing them together. Uh, when did you started to bring actual energy to spiritual energy to marry them together? You know, my my personal story is, you know, as I said before, I'm an electric engineer. So I grew up kind of in a man's world, you know, even at university, we were three women out of 200. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this kind of made me to always try to be better and in a way to prove myself mm. so I had a slight tendency maybe uh, some of your audience knows that to kind of be trying to be perfect so I wanted to show the world I can do everything um, so coming back coming back that I, I really wanted to show everybody I can you know have be the perfect um, family perfect job everything is perfect mm -hmm. and then I got my wake-up call and I got really very, very sick. Mm. And um, so as an engineer, I know there's always more than one solution to a problem. 
and that the you know the the way that was out was outlined to me by the traditional medicine, I just felt it's not right for me. I just can't do that, mm-hmm. and that's why I started looking around, and that's when I found the quantum field. And the, for me, it was so natural because you know. In a nutshell, the idea is everything is energy and it's the world of frequencies. And it's that's what I studied with what I grew up. I, I know what the frequency is. I know what energy is. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I learned the quantum healing um, technique and started experimenting on my own uh, or for, on my own body. And um, and then I saw all the progress and then, you know, but then family members showed up. Uh, can you help me on this? <laughs> and in a way, I really kind of learned, I don't, the, the, you know, the key is to know how to manage your personal energy. Mm, I love that. And how can we do that? How do we know we're running low or out of energy? Actually, your body tells you, right? You yeah. <laughs> normally, you know, but we we kind of forgot uh, forgot listening to our body. It, it yeah. tells us, yeah. but most of the time we are overruling it. And uh, and in our today's busy world, you know, it's it's very uncool to take breaks. You always need to be, you know, uh, involved. Fear of um of, uh you know not being on top of all the information. So it's kind of very stressful. And what I've learned is, you know, there are different, you know, I'm very still very busy, you know, I have my own business and I'm still, you know, working for this, uh, for the Swiss government, um, um, you know, shaping the Swiss energy industry, um, energy future. Mm-hmm. So I need a lot of energy. And I think everybody who wants to make an impact needs energy. So I have uh, exercises that, you know, can they take three minutes and you, then you kind of recharge your energy or you can protect your energy. We, we all know there are all these energy vampires out there, yeah. right? Sucking yeah. off our energy. Yeah. So how can you protect your energy? Or um, you can even set energetic boundaries. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things we, you can do with your, um, with your energy. And the goal in a way is to expand it because if you really have kind of a Amount, huge amount of energy around you then you're more resilient you're more centered and you're more productive yeah yeah I love that what is quantum quantum physics I'm, I'm an artist like I paint sing and do all that but I don't understand science and, and the math and all of it can you take me on a journey uh yes. to, think to me what it is I'd love to know <laughs> you know that uh actually you know we were all brought up uh, in the world of Newton. And what Newton said was, and what you were taught at school is, Mm -hmm. everything you don't see, you can't feel, and you can't measure, it just doesn't exist, right? And the, and that's the and that's the way how we we run and we say everything if you can't see it or or, or touch it then it just doesn't exist yeah and the, oh, there are some exceptions like electric energy but this one you can measure right that's mm-hmm. why it's it's uh, approved as being existent right mm-hmm. and um, so there yeah I would like to share a, a story with you which I really la- love um, and it's also involving Einstein because Einstein he was also work, uh, working on proving that there is a quantum field existing and in a way it you know we are kind of as a person you know when you you remember your biology classes mm-hmm. we have all these little cells right mm-hmm. and uh and all the cells have like an electron and then you have here the the protons and you know this is kind of how we are built up and they are made of energy right mm-hmm. so in a way we are all energy and even you know if you think about that um, all the nerves that running through our, our body, these are little, little currents. So we are, in a way, we have voltage between our in our cells. So in a way, we are walking battery. And around and any battery has an electromagnetic field around it. And the same are we having, right? And everything has an electric magnetic field. So coming back to the story of Einstein. Mm-hmm. is that I don't know if you know there is this um, 
um, physics lab, or uh, it's actually it's in Switzerland. It's called the CERN, and they have this uh, cyclotron, which is kind of fifty kilometers uh, large, and they are trying to kind of find the smallest parts, right? Mm. And um, and so they in um, so in the fifties they were doing this um, these um, experiments, and you know they were kind of there was a proton which is um, pretty small part and they were kind of cutting it in half right and so then they were they were moving half of it on one side and doing some exp experiments there so they were putting kind of some loading on them and and doing some experiments and after they were done one of the scientists he went back to the other half and was checking it out and then he found out whoops this part has the same loading as the other one they were working on, even if it was 30 kilometers apart. Mm -hmm. So they, they started experimenting mm -hmm. and then they noticed that, you know, when they put some loading on one, on, on one of the parts mm -hmm. in the same time, in the same moment, mm -hmm. it had the same loading, even if it was far away. And that's when, uh, when, when the scientists uh, discovered there is something around us we can't see and and in this field all information is traveling faster than the speed of light because it's in that moment mm -hmm. and this is the quantum field and einstein he was also a part of this uh, research team and he didn't he he didn't couldn't explain either and he said he called it the spukische fernbeziehung that's a german term but in a way uh, he thought these things only work because they were separated and these two parts were connected via their DNA. They had the same genes. And later on, it was found out that everything is connected via this quantum field. And even the um, Austrian physicist, um, Dr. Anton Seilinger, he just got the physics no no Nobel Prize this year for his work on the quantum field. So in a way, in a nutshell, it's the quantum field is just a huge energy field around us, mm -hmm. and we are all connected via this uh, quantum field. Wow! Thank you so much for explaining it that way. That ma it makes much more sense. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just love what you do, and I can tell how passionate you are about it and teaching. Do you teach uh, with with what you do? Uh, yes, I have, um, have uh, classes uh, or master classes I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, I'm just um, uh, finished writing my first book. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's called Change Your Energy, Change Your Life. And it will be published um, on 31st of October. And in this book, it's kind of, I show all these um, exercises, how people can manage their own energy. So it's 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 more about because I can work on the energy of of other people, you know, support them in their healing process. But you know, as we are all energy beings, it's natural to us to work with energy. We just kind of forgot about it. And what I'm I would like to empower people to start working on their energy and to manage it. Like we manage time, we can also manage our energy. It's the same thing, and it's even more powerful. Yeah, absolutely. How would you define human energy? Just the body energy? How would you define it? I would define it. Um, it's something most people can't see. Mm. But what we all can, we can feel it. Mm. And uh, we can feel it, you know, there are some things, you know, either we can feel it when we're you know, in com uh, communication with other people that we kind of sometimes are, you know, leaning forward when you're talking to somebody or you're kind of making a step backward because you're you're feeling the, the energy. And sometimes it's even, you know, you're probably, uh, quite sure you have also noticed when you enter a room and, you know, you can feel like the tension or the joy in this room. So we feel it, yeah? And it's it's much bigger than, than, we, uh, than we are. And um, that's how I would um, define it. And for me, in a way, it's, you know, for many people, it's time, their most precious asset. But for me, it's my energy. Because, you know, if you feel miserable, 
you can have all the time in the world but you just can't enjoy it. So uh, I'm always trying to take care of, of my energy. And um, and it's so much easier to shift your energy and compared if you're doing mindset work. Because, you know, when you do mindset work, normally you're overwriting it. Let's say you have a limiting belief and you want to, you know, change it. Then, you know, then for 30 days, you know, you have to focus on this new limiting belief and not positive belief to override the limiting belief. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, then you forget about it. It's very, it's hard and it takes long. And with energy, you know, when you, the, your limiting belief is just energy. So, in a way, you can remove it just like this, and it's gone. And then you can even activate a new one, and this all everything within three minutes. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, how would you define energy vampires? Because it's a it's a term that we toss around. I don't think all of us truly understand what it means, other than taking away from. But how would you define it in your own words? I think uh, energy vampires, and it's not necessary that it's always a person. It can also will be a task you really kind of hate doing because then uh, it drains your energy while you're doing it because you kind of have so much resistance and you don't feel comfortable in doing it. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's something what you're doing or when you're talking that makes you either feel you know sometimes you feel tired or you really feel exhausted after after a certain conversation with a person and yeah it's like a normal vampire right you see in the <laughs> movies it's kind of sucking out your your energy and taking it away mm -hmm. and then you kind of have to build up your own energy again to you know compensate the the loss of your energy yeah yeah i agree um did you always want to do what you're doing now when you were younger and going to school? No, because <laughs> I didn't know that it exists, right? I, I, you know, the thing is, my story with the energy started when I was four years old. Oh, wow. Because, yes, um, because the thing is, um, when I was four years old, I was in the garden and I found a very long nail, and so I thought, ah, you know, there is these plugs and I always wanted to know, you know, you, you know, you plug in like machines and then they start working. So I thought there must be something very powerful in these plugs. Mm -hmm. So I did something what you're not recommending to anybody. So I went with this nail into my room. I sneaked in and then I was standing in front of this plug and then I put the nail into the plug mm -hmm. and, um, the last thing I remembered was that I was kind of lying in the middle of the room and my mom was kind of bending over me completely, you know, what's going on? And she was really panicking. And so I, I was really lucky that uh, the, the security was faster and, uh, the, um, and prevented me, but it kind of threw me through the whole room. And then I was kind of so fascinated by this power that I really wanted to know how does this, how does the electric energy come into the plug? Mm -hmm. And that's why I studied electric engineering. And now I know. <laughs> wow. Can you share with us some of the work that you're doing around Europe and around the world when it comes to energy? You know, for my, for my corporate job, I'm working for the Swiss government and I'm kind of um, working in a team and we are responsible for the security of supply in, in Switzerland uh, so that there is enough uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. And last year with this energy crisis, we were very, very busy. And on the other side, um, um, with my personal energy business, I am having my one-to-one -one clients and you know showing them how they can have all the uh, the energy they need, and I'm also offering um, master uh, um, mastermind the four months mastermind which I will start next year in the beginning of next year. So because you know 
Many people, they said, you know, I'm doing so much to have more energy. I'm eating good food. I'm, you know, trying to sleep eight hours. I'm exercising. I'm taking care of my body. But still, I don't have the energy that I really need. And the reason behind is there is not only one energy because there are different layers. Mm -hmm. You have your physical energy, and most people are focusing on those. But you have also your energetic energy, you have your mental energy, your emotional energy, and even your spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. And only if you kind of have a certain level of all uh, these levels, then you kind of feel really full of energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some methods that you use when you're working with clients if they don't have enough energy? When it's not their diet or sleep, is it could it possibly you know spiritual how do you know where they need more the the thing is that um you know that's the beauty about um personal energy management is mm -hmm. you're always looking what's the cause of the problem mm -hmm. and um so you're looking for the what's the reason behind it you know because normally if you're tired or you have a, a physical problem there is a reason there's another reason behind it or sometimes there even more and so you go down right to the root and it can be a, a spiritual problem and then you heal that and if you heal the really the cause the root then all the symptoms go away automatically mm -hmm. and uh so how I work, uh, I only work remote because we are the quantum field, we are all connected. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I connect with the energy of the person. And, you know, all the information is in the energy. It's stored there. So I can kind of read out, like, um, as a data scientist, I can read out all the information and then translate it to the person. Mm -hmm. And then we, together, we just remove our all these things that are in the way and then uh, mm -hmm. yeah most of the most of the time you know the, then the situation changes and it's it's so amazing after a session like people look completely different because their energy has changed yeah. and um, and yeah they even feel differently and they even have different habits because they're like uh, mm -hmm. i love this one story you had about uh, speaking of about burnout Mm -hmm. I had uh, one client and she had like three burnouts and she was on the ver verge of the, of the next one. So it was really a very sad story. And she said, you know, the problem is I can't stop working. So she, she had this inner driver that was continuously pushing her to sit in front of her PC, even if she was already completely exhausted. Yeah. So we looked back. And then we found that the, the reason was um, was a story with her father when she, I think she was around five years old. And so we healed that and solved that. And it was really kind of when when I looked at her afterwards, she she said the same, you know, when, while I was working on her energy, she said, wow, I look 10 years older. And, and then and afterwards she said, wow, is this really me? And then at the, at the end of the session, then she said, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm closing my laptop and I'm going out for a walk and she hasn't done that for months right yeah wow that's that's amazing that's the power of energy you guys that's so amazing to hear yeah I see the body you know like a machine like you yeah. said it, it talks to us but not all of us listen to it um what would you recommend when it starts to break down <laughs> Uh, you know, how to heal. Does the work that you do help client heal illnesses and habits and other stuff? Yes, because uh, I think for at least in my world, of, I think, you know, traditional medicine there definitely has its reasoning. Yeah. But I, I get lots of clients that have tried everything, right? Yeah. With traditional medicine and they were kind of, stuck or didn't get the results they really wanted to achieve mm -hmm. and then we really look behind the scenes and normally you know your body just wants you to look at something or to yeah solve a problem mm -hmm. but most of the time we don't understand these messages yeah and that's why in a way 
sometimes it knocks us out that we take the time to look into a certain uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take this time and do this, or even you do it before, you don't have to get sick, right? The earlier you look into things, the, the earlier you heal it, then it's gone, right? Yeah. So what I see is in a way, yes, I can. And sometimes, you know, it's always about finding the cause and it's sometimes it's like an onion. So you have different layers you have to, to solve and to heal. And sometimes it's just one layer and then uh, it's gone. So I can never tell in advance. It's, it's always a little journey. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, what are some things that you do to keep your energy in balance? Yeah, uh, you know, the thing is, first of all, the you know our physical energy is definitely our the most fundamental so you know if our body is not working then it's very difficult mm -hmm. but the most significant energy is our spiritual one because if you're doing something that you really enjoy you kind of you know makes you jump out of bed <laughs> then you create your own you're your own power plant you know you know you're creating your your own energy Mm -hmm. So in a way, what I know that what I'm doing, it really has a huge impact. And I, you know, and looking at my clients after a session, it's kind of yeah. such an incredible energy boost. Yeah, if you know now you have so helped somebody else to feel better, right? Mm -hmm. So, but of course, sometimes it's all, you know, I'm a human being as well. So, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of stuff. I have to run a household. I have two teenage daughters mm -hmm. and I have a corporate job. So, of course, I also need an extra portion of energy. So mm -hmm. I have like my, my let's say, 10 minutes ritual in the morning. And I can do that whenever I need energy. And it's really like this. And this is why well, I think it's so powerful because most of the time when you need energy, you just don't have time to meditate or something because you're kind of in a rush or in something <laughs> doing. Yeah. So you need it in that moment, right? I'm a busy mom and I know all moms are busy. Yeah. So I, what I'm offering is these exercises and you can go to the restroom, do it for three minutes and then come out with a big smile full of energy. And then you can proceed, you know, whatever you wanted to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what messages do you have for moms that are busy? They're burned out, they're exhausted and they don't always find the time to focus on themselves. It's not that they don't want to, they mm -hmm. have to look after their kids and run a house and do everything like me. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there too. I, I know I know exactly what you're talking about, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I, what I figured out for myself is, if I take this five minutes break to recharge my energy, I'm so much more productive and can concentrate and focus on things what I'm doing. So it's a win-win situation because most of the time, if you're not taking breaks or looking uh, after, uh, after us, mm -hmm. we continue just going because I need to finish this, right? And then you kind of not so, you just want to get it done. And this is kind of a wrong energy. And uh, if you feel that you can kind of get, I just want to get it done, then it's the best time to take a break for five minutes. Maybe just even open the window and look outside, you know, if you don't want to do the energy exercise. And then come back because your energy has already changed and you will figure out you're much more efficient and faster and can finish it mm -hmm. in an easier way. Yeah. So it's it's all about, you know, letting go for a certain moment and then come back and then finish it with more joy and you feel much better afterwards. Yeah, I love that. What What are your thoughts on energy drinks and coffees? Do they actually work or not? <laughs> I never use it. I never drink coffee. I never, but you know, the thing is your body tell, can tell you. You know, I can show you a little exercise for, uh, do you want to see an exercise for, for your audience? Yes. You know, because actually you can ask your body and I, I have something here. It's not an energy drink, but it's uh, actually, it's a seat here. It's a pour, a little port wine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from Portugal, you know, and so it's not really an energy drink, but what you can, uh, can do is 
you can hold it in your hand. You need to stand and then you just can see how your body reacts. And then I, you, I ask the question, is this port wine good for me? Mm -hmm. And my body is tilting backwards, yeah. which means alcohol is, is definitely not, you know, you can drink it out, uh, once in a while, but it's definitely not something that's supporting your body. And you can do the, the, the same thing with a coffee or with an energy drink. You know, sometimes, you know, a friend of mine, she adores coffee, right? <laughs> and she couldn't live without one. And we figured yeah. out, you know, actually coffee is not good for her body. Mm. But then we, um, we we tested it out. And then we found out but, uh, what's good, very good for her is almond milk. So we thought, ah, how about putting almond milk into her coffee? Mm -hmm. And then we figured out this is kind of acceptable for her coffee. And so we saved her life, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Speaking of drinks, let's talk a little bit about food and diet. Diet. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience when it comes to different foods that gives us energy? Because not all of us get the amount of nutri nutrition that we're supposed to. I, I don't. <laughs> I try to. I'm busy and I do all this stuff. I know I'm not alone. What are your thoughts? You know, the thing is, that's what I uh, kind of uh, closing the circle I spoke at the beginning. Yeah. I was always uh, looking at the similarities between electric energy and our personal energy. Yeah. And for electric energy, we have this measurement. It's kilowatt hours where you, you know, how you pay your electricity bill, how many, how much you consume. And then I found out there is also a unit for our, how we can measure our personal energy. And this is called Bovis. Mm -hmm. And this was discovered by Andre Bovis. And Andre Bovis, he wanted to measure kind of the freshness and the, uh, the, the energy of food. Oh. Yes, uh, actually it's for food, but you can also use it for personal energy. And mm -hmm. he made a certain scale. At the beginning, his scale was from zero to 10,000 Bovis, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And he figured out that a normal healthy person has around 6,500 to uh, 7,000 boobies. That's uh, when you're kind of in a normal state. Mm -hmm. And what he figured out is if you eat food that is below 7,000 boobies, mm -hmm. it takes energy from you. And if you eat food that has more boobies than you're having, it gives you energy. Mm -hmm. So... In a way, you can just test it and it, uh, it's not complicated. You can do that like it's the same. You, you can use your body mm -hmm. and ask your body like saying, yeah, is this good for me? Mm -hmm. You don't even know, need to know the bovis. In a way, you need to, uh, I don't know if you want to test it out. Your body would move as well. You want to try? Yeah, yeah. What well, am I, do you want me to just stand and hold something? No, you just can. Uh, I show you an exercise. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> but we need to stand. Oh, okay. Can you do that? Yes, I can. <laughs> let's uh, get let's get you moving, right? <laughs> <laughs> I probably do need it. I'm just making okay. sure you so, can see me. I can I can tell you how you can communicate with your body, right? And um. Before you can communicate with your body and uh, and also communicate with your energy, you need to know what's the yes and what's your no, no of your body. Otherwise, you can't communicate, right? Mm. And so the first exercise is to figure out what's your yes and what's your no. So you can close your eyes and then you just you know put your hands on your stomach or on on your belly, mm -hmm. and then you can say you let everything go. Take a deep breath in your nose. That's just for the first time. And exhale through your mouth. And then you say, give me a yes. And then see how your body reacts. Give me a yes. Mm -hmm. See, yours is turning, tilting backwards, right? Yeah. Okay. So then go get back straight up and then say, give me a no. Give me a no. Mm. Okay, kind of to the side there. 
it's suicide okay mm -hmm. and then you can uh, say my name is uh, Bernadette okay my name is Bernadette yeah it's suicide right mm -hmm. so this is your then you can say my name is Paul my name is Paul going backwards a little bit right yeah wow yeah Awesome. So your your <laughs> yes is backwards and uh your no is backwards, sorry, and your yes is kind of um yeah, kind of yeah, it is. Wow. And then uh, and then you can kind of even if you go shopping, right? You can like mm -hmm. take a zucchini or something in your hand and then you can ask, is this good for me? And then you, you know, even by you can only buy products in a way already in the supermarket that are good for you, or when you're and uh yeah, so in a way, that's how you can find out what kind of food is good for you or not, just by communicating with your body. Yeah, that is so cool. I would I would have never thought of doing that. <laughs> and it wow. works with everybody. You just need to find your yes and your and your no. It's it's not with everybody. It's the same because mine yes is tilting forward and my no is tilting backwards, right? Mm -hmm. But um. Mm -hmm. And now you know, and you can ask so many questions. It's it's kind of, yeah, you can all ask all the questions you always wanted to ask your body, right? Oh, that, that's fascinating. I'm going to try that. I'm going to keep trying it. That's really cool. I would have and never thought of doing it. that. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, my last, well, the two questions for you. The first one okay. is, what is the meaning of life for you? It's a journey. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And um, where can my listeners find you and uh, check out what you're doing? Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> they can find me. <laughs> they can find me on the, um, corneliacarvan.com. Mm -hmm. That's my webpage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there you get all the, the information. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, yeah, from uh, first um, of uh, November on, they can even find my book on Amazon with uh, Change Your Energy, Change Your Life. That's so exciting. I, I want to check out your book. Uh, please send me the, the link or I can check on your website to see when it's out to check it out. I'm, I'm fascinated and I want to just learn more. Yeah, and there's a lot of more exercises about this communication, how you can integrate them in your daily life and, or, you know, also for your kids. And then so that, that's very important as, as moms. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and it would be great if you, I have um, a virtual um, book launch celebration party mm -hmm. on uh, November 1st. So I will definitely send you an invite and uh, yeah, you can also share it. In yeah. your community, everybody is invited who wants to know. It will be really, really cool. There will be um, the uh, keynote speaker will be Tessie from Luxembourg, the former princess from Luxembourg. And I have a lot of, um, you know, really cool speakers lined up. Yeah, cool. that's so cool. Um, how do you say thank you in your language? Danke. Oh, danke. Is, what language is that? It sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm, I'm living in, hey, hello. That's, we that's have a my guest. kid. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Hey. Um, uh, no, it's cool. Yeah, danke. Is, um, is that German? Yeah, it's, it's uh, German. Yeah, because I'm living in the Swiss part, uh, in the German part of Switzerland. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Wow. 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 <laughs> Dun danke. 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 Yeah. Danke. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Well, what was that? Sorry, go ahead. Um. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, dernier. <laughs> dernier. Um, well, oh, yeah. Amelia, thank you so much for your time. Thank you oh, for you. sharing your journey with me. <laughs> it was an honor to have you on the podcast. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> You're welcome. That's how I podcast people, for those who wonder how I do it. 